Public Affairs Commission, CAC, has extended the registration deadline for all point-of-sale POS operators by an additional 60 days. Originally, the Commission had set a deadline of July 7 for POS operators to complete their registration. However, in a statement released on its social media platform on Sunday, the CAC announced that the new deadline will be September 5, 2024. It said the extension is intended to provide more time for PS operators, especially those in remote areas who may have faced connectivity issues to successfully complete the registration process. All right. International finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed joins me now for more discussions. Good morning to you, Mokhtar. Uh, good morning, Justin. All right, um, I trust you had yourself a wonderful weekend. Let's just dive straight into the issues for the day. Let's start with a single currency for ECO as the ECO as it is now. It's been a long time coming. There have been several discussions on um, that particular matter. Looking at the West African subregion economically and um, all that has been going on in recent times, uh, do you think the time is right? And uh, do you think it's what we really need? And just how far can it go in uh, you know, facilitating trade and um, uh, economic activities in the sub-region? I think, um, Justin, we, we keep doing the same thing all over again. We think we'll get a different result. Um, I'm surprised that we are going that this route. Uh, you mustn't forget that um, before now, we tried to do those same, this same route uh, with the then uh, finance minister also told us about this ECO system, ECO, and then you came with the Anglophone, Francophone issue. I don't think that issues have been resolved. And uh, where is the headquarter of the ECOWAS Bank going to be located? And all those issues are issues that are political, that are affecting um, the decision to have a single currency. But for me, the most important decision, why I think a single currency doesn't work now, is how much of business we transact within ourselves in West African sub-region. You look at the data from Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, you see less than 1%, less than maybe 0.1% in terms of business transaction we have within African, you know, I'm not talking about Africa, even ECO, even within the ECO sub region with Nigeria. Most of our business are done with the Chinese, with the, with the Europeans, with the, with, 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 with the Americans. So when you want to have a single currency, it's when you will know that your volume of trade within yourself is much. That's when you begin to think of single currency. That's why Europe thought of single currency because it was not only about the trade, it was also about connectivity. To get a flight from Nigeria to, to us to Lome is even difficult. There's no flight from Nigeria to Lome. Talking of Nigeria to, to, to Cape Bat. So when you are talking about a single currency, how much trade have you been able to do within yourself? And how much infrastructure have you built within yourself? If you look at the European Union that are using one single currency, you look at the network of trade within themselves in terms of infrastructure where they move from one place to another to buy railway, buy a car, very high, high, high um, 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 highways. You have that in Nigeria, uh, whereby even from moving from Nigeria to, to Ghana, um, you, you, you see how bad the roads are. And again, our security agents tend to every country, they people have to come down, go into security clearance and all that. Is that why we want to implement the single currency? I think we should we should get serious. When we start doing trade within ourselves, we know that it's time for us to implement the single currency. But as it stands, I don't think it's time for us to implement anything that has to do with the single currency. I, I think it will not see the light. We're just wasting our time. We, we must learn to do business within ourselves. Then we increase the volume of business within ourselves. Then we begin to say, okay, now it's time to do the single currency because we know that we want to make trade seamless within ourselves. But for now, Hmm. Um, there's no, I, I don't think there's any need for that. All right, you, you mentioned quite a whole lot of, uh, you talked about the infrastructural issues, even roads connecting uh, these um, uh, states, uh, these nations in the sub-region. Okay, fine. If uh, the single currency is not what is our problem or what we should be facing in the immediacy, what should we be tackling? Because uh, there has been several talk concerning the um, AFCFTA, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement now. So how do we begin to domesticate all of that in the sub-region so we can actually enhance trade between um, Ghana, Nigeria, Lome, you know, and, and, and the likes? Because over time, there are always uh, issues with um, trade facilitation, border closures, and all of that. Just how do we begin to, you know, handle all of the stumbling blocks? Number one, we need to build infrastructures. And mm -hmm. like you said, one important thing, border closure. 
um, we, we closed our borders. And so, um, even up to this moment, the border between Nigeria and Benin is still short. So I wonder how you're talking about uh, single currency where you cannot even just mm. travel from here to Lome, I mean to Benin, with your Nigerian passport, you have to go through a, a lot of hassle. Um, even if you go by air to Ghana, the, the, when you land there, the kind of hustle you have to go, go through carrying the Nigeria and passport before you are allowed. Uh, it's also type of thing that we need to address. That is one. Then two, we need to look at our transportation network. Uh, yeah. Within uh, let's, the easiest one is air transport. How much have we been doing within ourselves? Yeah, you talk about the African Continental Trade Agreement. Why are some countries open to it? Some countries are not open to it. Nigeria is not even fully open to the African Continental Trade Agreement because uh, Nigerian businesses think they are not prepared yet because of it lack of infrastructure and that means the cost of goods in nigeria will be more expensive than the cost of goods in ghana and so that means will become a dumping ground a lot of things need to be um, settled in terms of tariff um, how where, where does the tariff come through but in terms of tax taxation where do you pay tax from so these are issues that um not being addressed so when you it's like more or less like uh, you are you are not even addressing the issues here you're not talking about the continental trade agreement uh, Africa, I mean, uh, uh, we are talking about single, like you said, African Continental Trade Agreement. We've not done anything there. We're within African countries, we've not done anything. If you look at airlines that are coming to Nigeria, as one of the largest um, economic hub of West Africa. You just see Kenya Airway, Ethiopia Airway, uh, World Airline in, in, uh, or, or in Ghana, and the other ones cannot even do daily flight. And again, how many Nigerian airlines are even flying? in some of these countries so we don't have volume of trade within ourselves so let's not deceive ourselves oh. a single currency as it stands is going to be a mirage so let's forget about that and let's build uh, a relationship let's see how we can build infrastructure so okay. that we can easily move our goods and services let's address the tariff issue let's address the taxation issue which good is free for taxation which good is not free for taxation then you begin to talk about okay we are not doing so much business within ourselves so we cannot begin to think for a single currency so for me i think let's build the infrastructure Let's see what um, in terms of tariff, and then let's look at our tax policy holistically and have a single tax policy for, for the yeah. ECOWAS sub region. Then we can begin to say, okay, it's not cheaper for me to buy uh, a, 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 an Ankara in Ghana than going to buy it in the UK. Well, since you've mentioned taxation, I think it does a, a next uh, port to just some um, slides to. Uh, you know, in the past few days, and there, uh, there have been recent development concerning the nation's tax policy, specifically withholding tax and um, those to be exempted. Uh, from what we hear right now, um, GENCOs and DISCOs are also uh, categorized as uh, companies that would be exempted from uh, uh, paying or withholding tax. Uh, in opinion now, so uh, is this um, a good news and um, just uh, what impact would it actually bring to bear? on um, the power uh, sector in Nigeria? I think um, it's a good move for the companies. I I, I mean, I, 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 we need clarity on that. Is it that I, I will stop paying VAT also when I buy a unit of my own credit too? So mm -hmm. that means you have stylishly reduced 10% of my uh, of my electricity tariff. So mm -hmm. I, I, I hope the government will give us clarity on that. You can't be giving the jinkos and the discos Mm -hmm. um those facilities are the detriment of our revenue and the, the people are still paying their withholding tax and why they are not paying withholding tax to the government from their own profit i think that is what mm -hmm. they need to come out clear to and give because a lot of businesses are suffering because of the tax uh, heavy tax burden i mean uh, not only tax but i mean heavy, heavy electrical tariff that they are paying so you if you are giving them 10 percent withholding tax they will no more their tax their company tax will no more be taxed by 10 percent are you telling me also that i'm going to be buying that i also free from that value added tax by buying a a, a, a unit of electricity so what it means now you are you are making the, the discos more richer than to the detriment of your people making them more profitable and why your people are suffering the burden of it because at the end of the day it's your people that really matters not about the company because if, you, if i'm not earning so much and i'm being paying so much how will i be able to 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 to, to even um um, um, um say the government have done very well so what we are seeing is a good is a good move for the government towards the the discos so that um, they can have more funds to expand or to buy more uh, um, and facilities especially now that we know that most of their facilities are also, also late 
So I, I think that is good. But I think, again, they must also begin to look at um, um, how they can also um, help um, the Nigerians also, also for them to enjoy the same benefit. Because just like you, just this week, I think early last week, 1st mm -hmm. of July, they've hiked their tariff. And after the hike of tariff, they're having a, a, a breather in terms of withholding tax. So mm -hmm. I think um, government should also look at the people also. Uh, let's look at something um, also very interesting, uh, although still worrying, which is um, the issue of um, unemployment and, of course, um, informal business. Uh, we are aware that um, Nigeria is home to approximately about um, to about um, 40 million MSMEs, and, of course, 90% uh, uh, are in the informal sector. But uh, MoneyPoint released a report uh, not too long ago, and it's saying that uh, Nigerians actually, uh, the bulk of Nigerians uh, recently just got into this informal business as a result of unemployment, not necessarily out of passion. Uh, what do you really think? Uh, because let me just read part of what um, it says. See, the largest group making up to about 43 percent is between 25 and 34. This youthful energy offers a tremendous opportunity for social economic transformation through innovation, entrepreneurship, job, and wealth creation. Is this um? Um, a good thing, or uh, how do we see it? Is it ugly or is it bad as it were? Now, there's unemployment in the country and people are channeling their effort, especially the young people, into informal business. How do you react to that, um, Mohammed? Justin, it's a good venture. It's a good thing. <laughs> right, okay. And I mean, you are being creative. You are looking at, look, I can't be waiting for a job. Job is not coming. There's something mm. I can do. And like we normally say, those they say, when alarm tear you, you will discover your passion. <laughs> so, Sometimes, again, a lot of people that are falling into businesses um, didn't prepare for it. Uh, that's the truth. Um, when they are in, into it, they begin to see how they get themselves into it. Yeah, very few people will tell you that this is the business I wanted to do and I, I just started and I got in there. there Sometimes it's because of the challenges of life. It, like you say again, look at the challenges of life will make you discover your talent. So uh, you, you see a lot of people say, look, I, I came into comedy because I couldn't find a job. And today they are one of the world renowned in terms of comedians and they are doing very well. So I think um, in, it's a good thing. I think it's not negative. We are not saying that 40% of Nigerians are not having job and the youth now they are taking to kidnapping, banditry, arm robbery. I think it's good that people are beginning to think inwardly, beginning to think, okay, look, can I can I be a solution to my to my own challenge? Can I begin to provide job for myself? For me, it's good. But again, like you said, uh, uh, as they are into those businesses, government should begin to come in and train them mm. because some of them find themselves in there by condition. Then it's not time for up the game for them. Maybe you have to set up a platform whereby you train uh, SMEs. You come in with policy. You give them free training. You, you, you attract them, and like we, we said in your program, I said in every program I have up here, if you attract them, you are giving them something, then it's easier for you to begin to tax them because you are giving something to them, and so they will be easily want to pay taxes also. So I think they have done their part. It's not left for government to do their part. Provide security for them mm. and provide a, a, a good infrastructure for them. Let them strive both in security and infrastructure. Then you can begin to tax them, and it's a good thing. So when your um, when when your economy is private sector driven or driven largely by SMEs that are paying tax that are productive, then you are taking your economy to the next level. That what happened in K that what mm. I mean, that what happened in China today. Ninety percent of Chinese are not employed by government; they are all into one business or the other. So I think it's a right is it is the right thing. But again, government need to come and help them. Okay, and that is why I agree with what. Um, um, uh, Aligo Dangote said during the week, with yeah. all these little, little uh, businesses springing up here, yeah, yeah, you can't be hiking rates, interest, interest rates at 30%. They're not easy, they cannot easily get from fund to scale their business to the next level, mm. having been able to start it with a little amount, and they are thinking of expansion, mm. and they don't have the relevant support from yeah. the financial sector through policy from the monetary side and policy from the physical side. I think these Nigerians have done themselves well uh -huh. by going up but again, um, they, they need the support of the government. Okay, before we leave this particular um, um, topic uh, to the last one, let me just read some of the statistics uh, that uh, you know were highlighted from that um, informal business report. It's, it said that um, 51.6% uh, 
uh, went into business because, uh, quote, they said I was unemployed. 35.9% uh, uh, went into the business uh, saying that um, my job wasn't providing enough. About 5.9% um, is for other reasons the why 3.8% um, uh, uh, inherited the business. And um, just 28 were really passion uh, or passionate um, uh, for uh, business or to get into business. I want you to comment on that, on that rather. And, uh, and also 68.2% uh, uh, states that feeding and family expenses, they state that feeding and family expenses as the primary things they spend their money on. Comments, Mokhtar. Um, Justin, I would say it's one in necessity is the mother of all invention. <laughs> Yeah. So, and um, I, I tell people, um, especially religious folks, when you go, they say it's your month of um, victory, oh. it's your year of um, victory, it's your year of this and that. No victory comes without a fight. Oh. So challenges are what brings out the best in any human being. Somebody said, if life is a roller coaster, then there will never have been any invention in life. Uh -huh. So for me, like I keep saying, I think it's a good thing that challenges are driving you into areas that you never thought you'd be. I, 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 I don't want to tell you my own story also. Whatever I'm doing today was born out of the challenges I have in paid employment and then decide to come out of it. I wasn't prepared for it, but once I get into it and I realize that, look, it's something that I can do, then I started upgrading myself, started um, um, developing myself in that area. So I think that is what will definitely happen at the end of the day. And uh, sometimes you've seen people that are passionate about their business, they have all the business plan, they say this and this and that. At the end of the day, they are not the ones that strive. But those ones that accidentally find themselves in business, they now they, they go there with their zeal to succeed. And then then they as they move forward, they begin to add passion into it. Mm -hmm. And you see them succeed big time. Um, if you ask every businessman I've been telling you, he will tell you that. I was in a particular state of business. I never thought, but I saw an opportunity in an area. Then I get into it. So opportunity here is the key. If you are going into business, did you see an opportunity to provide service? What is business? Business is an opportunity to provide service. Hmm. And then the value you get from your service is then in turn turns to profit. So I am excited about that. For me, it's a good thing that we are seeing Nigerians say, look, I am unemployed. Instead of me to think of how I will borrow money from Justin, borrow money from Mukta, borrow money from A and B to begin to gather it, to go to the embassy, to go to UK or to go to Canada, I'm not beginning to look inward that, you know what, will I begin, uh, can I do something here at home? Mm. Now, uh, this is a little digression. Look at what is happening in France. So, they, 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 we are beginning to see a shift and very soon it will be like what happened during COVID everybody to your own tent solve your own problem yourself my country is no more a dumping ground for immigration you cannot come to my country and make a living you have to stay in your own country <laughs> so we, we should begin to think inwardly now and begin to see what we can do for me fantastic um, data that has come out all right um, Okta, thanks for all of them um, the inputs that you have provided i had wanted us to talk about um, the cac extension but for um, uh, sake of time we'll look at that on another um, time thank you so much for the inputs that you have brought on the show today um, Okta mohammed is an international finance and economic analyst many thanks once again thank you for having me justin thank you all right that's the size of the show for today i am justin Academy. thanks for being a part of it bye for now <laughs>